yeah we'll get started uh, so just before we went for the break we were looking at how aaron kind of provided a covering for those sacrifices which were brought you know so they were not always perfect uh, but he kind of provided a covering for them in his role as priest and so because of him because of his presence you know standing over there and uh, with the with that uh, uh, you know with that wording on the on the turban which says holy to the lord because he was acceptable to the lord um whatever he accepted on behalf of the people was also regarded as being acceptable to the lord and so in that sense he kind of was providing a covering for these people who maybe could not afford you know uh, very perfect uh, sacrificial animals now in the new testament uh, we who are priests we believers who are priests we also kind of provide a covering for you know uh, those who who are maybe related to us or who are placed under us you know uh, uh, as as part of our responsibility so to an extent we kind of provide a covering for them um, you know we'll take the actual uh, example given here in the scriptures and then we'll also see how we can you know uh, apply that principle uh, to other uh, aspects as well so you know uh, to look at how this whole sanctification uh, process works in a family setup uh, so if someone could read out for us first corinthians chapter 7 verses 12 to 14 first corinthians chapter 7 verses 12 to 14 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 12 to 14. To the rest I say this, I not the Lord. If any brother has a wife who is not a believer and she is willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. And if a woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife, and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. Okay, so now over here in this passage where it talks about how the believer sanctifies the rest of their family members, even if they are unbelievers, um, it's of course not saying that they get salvation okay so just because a person is a believer uh, and that believer is related to the rest of the family members the rest of the family members do not get salvation just because of the believer it does not work that way because we know that salvation is based completely on faith and it clearly says here that these other members of the family are unbelieving they have not placed their faith in jesus so obviously it's not talking about salvation you know john 1 12 to 13 it says yet to all who did receive him to those who believed in his name he gave the right to become children of god okay so only those who believe in his name and place their faith in him and submit to him they are the ones who are considered children of god the rest of the people are not children of god so over here in the first corinthians 7 passage it is not saying that the unbelieving spouse and the unbelieving children will automatically become believers. No, it's not saying that. But they are kind of under the covering of this believer in the sense now they will begin to enjoy all the covenant benefits, you know, which this um, believer is enjoying. For instance, you know, uh, you know, if, if it's just the wife who has placed her faith in the Lord because she has become a believer, you know, God protects and shields her entire family. Um, when it comes to, you know, matters of job and workplace now, because she is a believer, you know, God will bless her work. God will promote her in a workplace. Uh, so, uh, you know, she would earn a higher salary. She would bring more money into the home. So she is beginning to you know, uh, enjoy all the covenant blessings that are you know, uh, part of being a believer because she has chosen to come under God's covenant. Uh, 
the rest of the family members are in, are indirectly enjoying the benefits of the covenant but they themselves are not really members of the covenant as yet okay so in that indirect sense they are enjoying the benefits and uh, what about the spiritual covering that the person is providing so uh, that lady because she is a believer she starts talking about what she's learning from the scriptures so through her her family members start hearing the word of god okay she may not quote the scriptures word to word but you know she just talks about the things that she's learning and so indirectly in a way they are hearing from through her they get into hear the words of god they get into hear what god has to say about different things in the bible and uh, even as they start hearing those things there's a chance that the word of god will start working in their hearts um also on a practical day to day level they will literally see her changing into a different person they can see the power of god working in her making her a, a more patient person a more wise and thoughtful person they begin to see changes in her and they see the power there is in the word of god how the word of god can literally change a person into some someone else you know so they get to see all of this and so they have the privilege of kind of being under the covering of a believer and um so who knows you know that may that may draw them into god's presence it may make them want to have god in the same way and uh, so um that family is blessed because of the uh, believer who is there amongst them um now what about you know a family where all are believers uh in such a family setup you know where, where uh, all are believers if the head of the family you know the the father the husband if he chooses to really be serious about his walk with the lord and he is you know cooperating with the lord so that the lord is able to set him apart make him more and more holy um you know really sanctifying him on a daily basis if he is really serious about that imagine what a great uh, covering he would provide for his entire family because the more he becomes you know uh, joined to the lord you know in sync with god in in all the different aspects of his life the way he manages his money uh, you know the way he manages all the relationships you know within the family and you know with all the other relatives and friends and all of that uh, though the decisions that he takes the long term plans that he takes you know on behalf of the family he starts doing all of this um you know with, with that with that one thought of honoring god in everything that he does and being very responsible as a husband and as a father and he starts taking all of that very seriously imagine what an amazing covering that he is he's offering to his family members because the covenant blessings of god are going to start uh, working in that home without any hindrance or obstacle because this man is you know allowing the clean clear flow of god into his home you know he's not blocking of god by having his own attitudes is not blocking of god by refusing to listen to god's guidance he all those blockages are going away one by one he is allowing himself to be sanctified more and more and so god's presence is able to flow through him into his family uh, to a great extent and that is the sad thing a lot of uh, men who are the you know spiritual heads of their home they don't take their responsibility seriously they assume that if they are earning enough then they are doing enough for the family but that money part is like such a minor thing um because uh, god's presence uh, is so much more important it can change every aspect of the family's life and if this person all his contribution to his family is that is bringing in money what a sad thing on the other hand if he's bringing in god's presence into that home that god's presence can change everything for his you know for his wife for his children uh, so uh, rather than just bring being people who carry money into the home uh, if the heads of the family can be people who are literally carrying god's presence into the home um, they can enrich the life of their family uh, so in that sense you know uh, the uh, the fathers and the husbands especially are uh, able to sanctify their family 
uh, and any believer, in fact, absolutely any believer um, is able to uh, act as an agent of sanctification in that you know, in, in that sense, where they are able to carry God's presence into that home setup. And because of them, things start changing in that home. Uh, so in that sense, we all have a role, a priestly role, where not only are we getting sanctified, we are able to do something for our immediate family members. We are able to um, cause God's presence to flow into their lives through us. Now, uh, there, there's a greater significance for those who are in, you know, in leadership roles in the church. And by that, I don't mean that you need to be a full-time uh, employee who's being paid by the church. Any volunteer, you know, any church volunteer who has like, you know, dedicated themselves for a leadership role, you know, where they are, you know, running a cell group or, you know, where uh, they have made a commitment that they're going to follow up with a few people and, you know, pray with them and, you know, disciple them and uh, be there for them, in, you know, when they have questions and all of that. So these people who have, you know, committed themselves to different leadership roles in the church, whether or not they're full time, it doesn't matter. Uh, so such people, they would have a great um, priestly role, you know, in what they are doing. Um, uh, and we, you know, maybe we can look at a couple of verses which talk about that. Uh, Acts chapter 20, verse 28. If someone could read out Acts 20, verse 28. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Keep watch over yourself and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, the shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. Now, see, these people are keeping watch over the flock. Okay, so um, they are going to be caring about the uh, you know spiritual growth of these people who are you know, under their care. Um, and uh, when they are going through you know, difficulties, just you know, ordinary everyday uh, you know uh, issues, you know, regarding work, you know, regarding health, uh, regarding decisions that they need to make. So these people who are, are there to kind of guide them, pray for them, help them, you know, in uh, in reaching the right decisions, all of that. So uh, they are watching out for the flock, and so in that sense, um, they have a priestly role where they are using. <laughs> <laughs> their maturity in God, you know, they are using that to be a blessing to the people, you know, uh, for whom they have taken responsibility. So you could be just the, you know, the leader of a Bible study. And let us say maybe you have about five or six people in your group. You can be a great blessing to them because you're going to be, you know, praying for them, interceding for them. You're going to be sharing truths from the word of God, which, you know, which, and you're going to be teaching them so that they can live a better life, a more, uh, you know, God centered life. So you become a priest where, because of you, those people are getting spiritually covered in that sense. You know, you're, they're under your covering, your care. And uh, because you are so committed in your little role of leadership, God literally uses you uh, to uh, to bless them and and to cause them to grow and and so all of us, irrespective of whether we are you know um, full time employees of a church or not, we can all be ministers in that sense. Even just a youngster, you know, a youth um, who is who has you know kind of you know gone to God in prayer and said, Lord. This year, I want to I want to be a spiritual influence for you know five youngsters, just peers you know of his own age group. So he has made a commitment that he is going to be a godly influence on five persons. So the way he relates with them, the way he's there for them, you know, when they are you know going through tough times, uh, the way he reaches out and tries to help them in different things, all of those things that he's doing, God is you God you will start using him to influence their lives and change them so in in that sense even though he's not even a leader in the church and he's not been recognized by the pastoral you know team as, uh, as as a leader that guy just at his own level is providing a covering for the people who know whom he whom he has taken under his care uh, so it can be something as informal as that but you can start being a 
sanctifier as in even as god is sanctifying you you start reaching out to others and start helping them to be set apart to god you know you help them to start growing in those things so uh, this is a great influence that we can you know have over other people's lives um and um, hebrews 13:17 if we could read out hebrews 13:17 Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17 Obey your leaders and submit to your authority they keep watch over you as men who must give an account obey them so that their work will be a joy not a burden for that would be no advantage to you So here these leaders I you know this is, of course is applying more to people who have been officially appointed uh, you know um, by the leadership as uh, having to take care of maybe different portions of the congregation again they may be full time or they may just be you know doing it as volunteers in their free time but they have been kind of given uh, the responsibility of being um, there for a set of believers so they have to kind of take care of uh, the spiritual growth of those believers and all of that and it says over here they keep watch over you as those who must give an account so one day when they stand before the judgment seat of god god is going to say are ah, these people were placed under your care how did you shepherd them how were you there for them how did you guide them how did you cause them to know me better you know were you there for them when they were going through you know uh, the normal hardships of life did you reach out a helping hand did you say a prayer for them at that time uh, were you uh, you know physically present and you know helping them out in different things all of these are very scary questions that are going to be asked of us on judgment day so if you are responsible at all for anyone you know in your church if the leadership has placed you in a position of um, responsibility uh, it's not something that you can take lightly it's not enough if you can you know prepare one bible lesson and go and teach it to them that's very nice that's an excellent thing but it goes beyond that uh, you are in a way responsible for them because you are a priest okay so all of us are priests and once we have been given some kind of a position of authority where we are now responsible for certain people we are kind of responsible for all aspects of their life we can't just say i'm giving them a bible lesson that's more than enough no that's just one small component we are expected to reach out and help we are expected to keep them in prayer uh, we um, kind of to an extent you know are responsible for them and we will be we will have to give an account of it one day okay so all this is part of being priest all this is part of being set apart and you know kadosh unto the lord um okay let's look at another aspect of this whole uh, concept of us having to live in holiness uh, romans chapter 1 verse 7 if someone could read out romans 1 verse 7 Romans chapter 1 verse 7 to all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints grace and peace to you yeah. from yeah. God our father and from the Lord Jesus Christ uh so these people uh the believers it says uh, who are loved by God and called to be his saints okay that word saints is kind of um kind of has lost its original you know meaning so actually literally it's that word hagios okay that Uh, Greek word. So all it's saying is they have been called to be holy people. One seven. All of us have a calling. We all have ministerial callings. You know, in the sense we are supposed to minister to one another. Uh, we have a calling uh, to uh, fulfill the purposes for which God, you know, has created us. We have all of those callings. But there's one really important calling. We are called to be holy people. there is no option i mean we cannot say oh i i if i want to i will be holy no we all have this calling which we have which is to be holy people to be saints and uh, you know like we saw in the very initial lesson that just basically means even as we cooperate with the lord and even, even as we respond to him you know each time he gives us a revelation of his holiness each time he explains new things to us about his holiness 
we choose to respond positively and say, yes, Lord, I want to learn this and I want to apply it and practice it. So even as we are doing that, his nature gets reproduced in us. And then people are, are able to start seeing it because his nature is revealed through us. His holiness is revealed through us. Uh, so this is a responsibility that we all have. And um, this is something very important in God's eyes. Uh, if we can you know, look at Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. If someone could read out Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. Okay, so here the uh, Israelites have been, uh, you know, are being called treasured possession. God considered them his treasure. You know, treasure is something valuable. Uh, it's something that you don't want stolen from you. It's something that you you know keep very carefully and you watch over it because you value it. You you actually treasure it. It's something precious to you. And of course, in First Peter two nine, you know we saw the same terminology being used for even uh, God's uh, believers today, uh, where it, where we are called a holy nation and we are called God's special possession. So, God treasures us um if if we are living in an honorable way and we are allowing ourselves to be made holy by him on a daily basis then we are really like a treasure on the other hand imagine if he considers us his treasure and we are living in a very rotten way what kind of a treasure would that be it would be uh, such a valueless uh, you know, uh, such a low-grade thing. And uh, so what God considers his treasure, we would, in fact, be desecrating. So it becomes very, very important that not only should we positionally be holy because, you know, he has made us righteous and he has declared us holy, but at a practical level, in daily practice, we are supposed to continue walking into greater holiness so that we will continue to remain a treasure. You know, if we live however we want, then we are in fact desecrating what he considers as something valuable, you know, by 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 lowering it. And uh, that is something that God, you know, he says, you're profaning me. So because of the seriousness of that, um, we already have a positional holiness, but on a daily basis, we also begin to, uh, develop holiness in different aspects of our lives. So for us to do that, you know, um, we have to first of all understand what has been done for us positionally and believe that it is the truth. Once we start believing that this is my position in Christ, then we will be able to start living it out in our everyday practice. If we have not, you know, got that concept into our minds at the at, uh, uh, at the basic you know understanding of what we are we'll continue to behave like sinners so for us the first step is to accept believe understand what we are what god has made us into position wise once we have a clear understanding of that and we in humble faith choose to believe what he is saying about us regarding our position then on a day-to-day -day basis, we will start acting it out because now we really believe that about ourselves. So, you know, let's first look at that um, about how the power of sin has been broken. We are no longer under the power of sin. We need to understand that because once we catch that, once we understand who we are, then we will start living it out. Okay. Um, so, Romans chapter 6, verse 6. Of course, you know, we will not go through the entire chapter of Romans, uh, the entire Romans 6, because that would take time. But we are looking at specific verses from Romans chapter 6. You know, um, this is all very, very important because um, we've talked about the importance of holiness. We've talked about how God sees it as a very serious thing. We've talked about all of that. But at the end of the day, if we are not 
becoming holy, then where's the point in having gone through all of that lecture? So, uh, you know, Romans 6, 6 is now telling us, inviting us to actually start being holy, to catch these things, to understand these concepts. So, you know, this is, this is all very serious stuff. So uh, let's look at Romans chapter 6, verse 6, if someone could read out for us. Romans chapter 6, verse 6. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Now, if we do not catch this, if we do not believe it, then um, the whole uh, sanctification process becomes difficult. Because here, God is making a statement now we either believe that he's uh, what he's saying is true or we call him a liar see it, it literally comes down to that because here in romans 6 is very very plainly he says our old self was crucified with him that old person that we were who loved to sin who had no control where we had to sin even though we uh, we wanted to be holy uh, we are unable to be holy uh, we are, uh, you know, we are, we are kind of um, enslaved by sin. We have no control over our, ourselves. The sin who is our master is controlling us and making us do sin even when we don't want to. You know, we were in that kind of a pathetic, desperate uh, state. But at that point of salvation where we said, Lord, I believe that you are going to impart your righteousness to me. I can never do this on my own, but you are going to make me holy and you're going to make me blameless one day and place me, present me before the Father. You're going to be doing all this. I believe this in, act, in simple faith and I choose to submit to you and I choose to walk with you. That moment when you made that decision and on in the, at that moment when the Holy Spirit came inside and created something brand new, a new creation was created you know inside that's this physical body the physical body continued to be what it was the your your your, your thoughts and mind uh, the thoughts of your mind the feelings emotions that continued to be the same but that dead spirit inside that was taken out and a brand new person was placed inside we got to understand this believe it as the truth and accept it and once we do that, then we start saying, oh, now because I am a new creation, I don't need to be living the way I used to live before because that person died, that person was crucified, that person, God, Jesus got rid of. In the place of that person, God has placed a new creation. And so now because I am a new creation, I can start training my old thoughts, my old feelings and bringing them in line with, you know, the person that I have been made into now. So that's a so we first of all recognize what what has been done to us, what has been done for us. And after recognizing that, we start living it out. So when my mind again says, Oh, you know, let's go back into, into those sins, let's do that once again, we explain to our mind and say, you know what? That person that was living earlier was crucified. That person died. Now there is a new creation, and now you mind are the mind of a new creation. So come in line, come in line with what I am telling you and what I'm teaching you. I am a new person now. I am no longer that person. So mind, what you are asking for and thinking about are old things. That person is gone. So you have to now come in alignment with who I am today. I am now a new creation. So you tell your mind and you teach your mind who you are now because that, that thing still has got outdated information it still doesn't know the facts so you have to teach it train it and then your mind slowly begins to understand and say oh now i'm a holy person is it oh so now i need to start living in a different way is it it's not going to catch it at first 
but you because you are a new creation you're going to teach it and train it and you know point out bible verses to train say see this is how you are supposed to be now because you i am a new creation so you being a new creation you take your stand and you teach your mind how it is supposed to be now but you yourself you know if you're thinking oh am i really a new creation did i really get crucified on the cross so this is something very fundamental your first step is to in your mind accept the fact that now you have been made into a new creation the person that you were earlier that helpless person who could not control themselves and keep themselves from sin that person got kicked out that person died got buried somewhere okay that person is gone finished you are a new creation created literally by the holy spirit you've been birthed by the holy spirit which is why you know we call ourselves born again you literally are a new person now it's just that your brain has not been given that information okay brain of course is the physical component your mind your mind has not yet been taught that now you it's your responsibility to start teaching your mind these new things and then your mind when it starts catching it it will get excited and say oh wow i can have a new way of life now okay so your mind is going to be a little slow in the beginning you got to renew it constantly day after day by teaching it these facts which is why in roman 6 11 to 14 it says these things you know so these are the things that we would start practicing uh, so if someone could read out romans chapter 6 verses 11 to 14 6:11-14 In the same way count yourself dead to sin the life to God of Jesus therefore do not sin bring in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of sin as instruments righteousness for sin shall not be your master because under law but under grace okay so there is still something called sin it's there out in the world and it's also you know uh, there in our physical body i'm not I'm not exactly sure you know how that is uh, how that works out i mean god has not given us all of the details but sin is still around okay sin did not die sin is very much around and so it continues to tempt us it continues to say uh, okay you are a new creation but you can always try to do the old things you know so uh, sin is around sin is not dead but uh, you the old person the kind of person that you were that helpless person that's gone dead gone buried now you are a new creation that that the holy spirit literally created and so you are no longer under the control of sin and so it says over here in Romans chapter 6 verse 11 count yourself dead to sin accept the fact now you either believe this as the truth because god is speaking it a holy god who can never lie he is saying this very plainly that old person has been crucified i did the crucifying i crucified that old you and i have created a brand new new person you know so count this as the fact accept this as a fact is what it says over here in romans 6 11 count yourselves dead to sin and alive to god so sin is going to come along and say you know why don't you give your hands to sinful deeds why don't you give your you know mind to sinful deeds your the so sin is going to come along and say you know like the way earlier you you used to give out your various various body parts to it's to sin why don't you continue doing that so you know it will uh, sin, sin will come to you and say you know give your eyes to the wrong things to watch the wrong things but then you have to now say no i am now a new creation and so now i choose to use my eyes for godly things so you make a personal choice and because now you believe and you realize who you are you realize that you are this brand new person you start offering every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness so that's what it says um so in uh, romans chapter 6 verse 11 it says now start counting yourself as dead to sin accept the fact that you are a new creation okay 
and because you are accepting yourself now as a new creation verse 12 it says therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires it says in verse 13 do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness but rather now because you have finally understood that you are a new creation what do you do you start saying i am going to offer my eyes as instruments of righteousness i'm going to offer my ears rather than listening to the wrong kinds of music you know i'm going to offer my ears for godly music so you know you you make these choices and you start offering every part of you as instruments of righteousness and and you're doing this now because you have understood that you're no longer that helpless person you know who was giving in to sin that person got crucified and got or died and got kicked out you are now a brand new creation literally created by the holy spirit himself so you have the authority to give your eyes for godly things you really have the spiritual authority you know to use your tongue for godly speech so you no longer need to be the person that you were before because that person died and that person doesn't even exist anymore and so you ask you wait on god and say lord let this truth become more and more real to me and the more and more real this truth becomes to you it becomes easier for you to recognize that you now have the authority and the freedom to offer yourself for godly things so you start saying sure because i am now who i am i i, I have the freedom now to offer myself for godly things and god will back you up in doing that because he's going to see that you really believe what he is saying about you and you're actually cooperating with him and you know um, uh, doing up uh, applying these things practicing it in your life and god will say wow this person believes me this person trusts me even though the you know unrenewed mind is still you know sending off all the wrong signals even though sin is coming and tempting this person is choosing to believe what i am saying about them that they are a new creation and god will honor you for your faith for your trust for your belief and he will help you he will give you the authority you need to offer your eyes to the right things to offer your tongue for the correct things you know to offer your mind your thoughts for the correct things he will really back you up and help you in doing that and even as you start start doing it more and more you kind of get a hang of how to do it you know so it's 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 a learning thing uh, the same way that little baby you know starts learning to walk uh, and it is a slow process in the sense you know day by day um, he learns how to balance himself and how to place his feet so at a spiritual level we who are the new creation on day one we may not really know how to you know give our eyes for righteousness and you know, but slowly we begin to uh, to learn these new this new way of living this new way of walking the new this new way of thinking um it it happens on a daily basis even as we are renewing our mind and teaching it the things of god and discovering the things of god and all in, in and in, even as you're going through this process god is there by your side every moment empowering you helping you equipping you so it is a, it's it, it's an exciting journey of discovery you're discovering how to be holy and god is there backing you up with all of his power every step of the way so the simple thing will be don't allow your eyes to go to the darkness you know because um, you know and start thinking about those things rather stay focused on him stay focused on his word stay focused uh, you know on uh, other godly people who can you know, be an encouragement to you if you're with the wrong company with the wrong people you will get pulled back you know even though you're a new creation which is so foolish a new creation going and doing old things so unnecessary you know so um, the so avoid the old company the old people who you know who used to you know pull you into wrong things so you give up those things uh, you give up the old habits you know which, which which used to always drag you down into sin so you give up those old habits so you start getting rid of all the old baggages you know which can pull you back and you start um accepting this new things where you can flourish as a new creation you know because uh, in in that old uh, among that old set of friends this new creation is going to have a real struggle i mean how are you going to live out your new life among them because they they're going to be constantly asking you to be doing the other you know the wrong stuff so the the stuff that you've been watching the stuff you've been listening to if you're still holding on to those old things this new creation struggles to to function in that atmosphere because 
um, the entire pull and the message and the thing of that old stuff is, you know, do the wrong. So you, you know, if you can just get get rid of those things and push them aside, and you know, start um, accepting new friends and you know the the new kind of literature which you read, the new kind of stuff that you listen to, the new kind of hobbies that you take up, all these new things, it becomes easier for your new creation to just breathe and be, be itself. You know, so so don't allow yourself to continue being in that old atmosphere come you come out of it because then you can just relax and just be your new self you know it makes it easier for you so don't make it hard on yourself by holding on to old things so these are all things that we choose to do and um, uh, so uh, maybe we can also read romans 6 19 yeah you know before we move on to the next thing uh, if someone could read out romans 6 19 please romans chapter 6 verse 19 I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves. Just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever increasing wick wickedness, so now offer them in slavery to righteousness leading to holiness. Okay, so um, a person, a human being never stops being a slave. Earlier you were a slave to wickedness and you had no control um, even though you were ashamed of the of what you were you had no control but now you are a slave under god and uh, god wants only the very best for you so you are still a slave but you are a slave to righteousness you are his property you have been purchased by him and he is backing you up and he wants to help you so if you start offering yourself to him uh, you know, then you will be able to live a holy life. So, which is why, you know, once you have, um, um, it's like, let, let's let's just think of it as, you know, two houses. So you were living in that other house where, you know, your sin was your master and you had, and, and you had this entire lifestyle over there. Now you're coming to a new house and here, uh, you know, God is the master and now you are his slave and he's, he loves you. He's backing you up and he wants to, wants you to have a, grand abundant life and all of that now you see if you bring all the old baggage from that other house over here to this new house kind of makes it tough right because um, um, uh, you're still surrounded by all the old fittings and uh, so then your mind would again go back to its old style of living every day so which is why they say you know it's a complete overhaul not only do you just simply you know start bringing in some new practices of reading the bible and praying and you know mixing with the uh, believers you start getting rid of the entire baggage all that is there in that old house let it sit there in the old house now you're in a new house you know so start developing new habits you know um, have have new friends uh, watch a new set of things you know um, god will help you god will you know lead you uh, to find things which you can you know now enjoy as a new creation so this is all just a walk with him he will guide you he will teach you he will help you you I may mean, you can maybe take the help of people you know who, who have been longer in the lord and then they can you know give you advice on um, what you can do you know so um it's all just a journey of discovery because now you are in a new house okay in this new house the master is god and god has got only good things for you so uh, you know just in the last few minutes that we have uh, this is the last portion of your chapter 3 uh, so you know where it talks about uh, sanctification in different areas of your life uh, so mm, so like we already you know looked at we there's a positional sanctification at the moment of salvation god clothed you in christ's righteousness and declared you as completely righteous so yes positionally you are righteous but there is a practical progressive daily sanctification that continues on a daily basis and um so positionally first corinthians chapter 6 verse 11 is what happened to you um so if someone can read out first corinthians chapter 6 verse 11 please first corinthians chapter 6 verse 11 
and that is what some of you were but you were washed you were sanctified you were justified in the name of the lord jesus christ and by the spirit of our god so at that moment of salvation the holy spirit you know he, uh, you know when he was creating this new creation at that time he completely washed you he sanctified you set you apart for himself he declared you as justified and righteous so positionally you already arrived okay which is why in, in the next moment you know in case i mean you, you aren't going to die but in the next moment if you were to drop down dead you would immediately enter into heaven because positionally you are already completely righteous and accepted by god but on a day to day basis because you have been given this privilege of you know being his child you choose on a daily basis to start acting like a new creation and uh, so it says in hebrews 10 14 a very important verse you know where it brings out the two aspects the positional sanctification and the progressive everyday sanctification that needs to be done so because in hebrews 10 14 it says for by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever okay so you have already been made perfect forever those who are being made holy so you have been made perfect forever but when it comes to day to day thing you start being made holy in every aspect in your thinking in your speech in your actions in your choices in all of that you make a choice and so in our i know in 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 our notes it just talks about different areas where you can you know start training yourself to be holy so it talks about sanctification of mind and body and uh, one good scripture for that would be philippians 4:8 where it says you know earlier you used to think about all kinds of worldly things but now you know think about things which are right which are pure which are lovely think about such things so uh, when you start thinking more about good things then it will be easier for you to live a holy life on the other hand if you're still thinking all those old old uh, you know old old uh, selfish self centered uh, sinful things how you know it makes it more difficult for you to be a new creation so um, rather dwell upon things which are noble which are right is what it says in philippians 4:8 it also in ephesians 5:4 I'm not sure whether all these um, scriptures are there in your notes but anyway these are just things which i jotted down so i think some of them may be there some of them may not be there in your notes but you know these are all very practical useful verses so ephesians 5:4 it says you know um you know, there should be no obscenity foolish talk or coarse joking which are out of place but rather thanksgiving so you know the way you speak um so um change the change your speaking style let there be no more foolish or coarse uh, speech but rather let there be you know um uh, speech which honors god so those are all uh, sanctification in your mind and body uh sanctification in your desires and your affections so uh, uh and over here the i think the scripture uh, verse that was given in in the notes is first thessalonians 4 3 to 8 where it says each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable uh and then in first first thessalonians 4 7 it says for god did not call us to be impure but to live a holy life uh, therefore anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being but god so if you are refusing to control your body and keep it holy you're not just simply breaking a rule you're literally rejecting god himself something very very serious so you need to be sanctified in your desires in your affections and your passions it also talks about in your notes the next point would be sanctification of your dreams and hopes okay so um um oh we have only one minute left but if i can just squeeze something useful into that one minute you know uh, matthew 633 which says seek first his kingdom and his righteousness uh, and all these things will be given to you as well so uh, over here it's not saying you know you go just sit on the mountains and you meditate upon god's kingdom and his righteousness no in all the practical everyday things that you do you know in your in your office in your workplace place the kingdom matters first place righteousness and godliness first in your hobby in whatever hobby you're practicing let it be something which will uh, which is you know righteous let righteousness be your priority when you're exercising your hobby everyday normal relationships you know let them let, let your relationships be uh, you know 
righteousness focused let them be kingdom focused so that's basically what it means matthew 6:33 seek first his kingdom and his righteousness you know in all the practical aspects of your life and then god will take care of your needs he will provide for all your needs that will be taken care of by him automatically so uh, in that way it talks about sanctification of time and talents sanctification of your home and family uh, all of those so maybe you could you know kind of go through those points later uh, when you have the time so we will know we'll quickly close with a word of prayer um yeah because we are out of time lord we just thank you so much for the things that we could learn from your word today uh, we have a clearer understanding of what it means to be set apart you take it very seriously and you have declared us each of us as set apart and so we should not be desecrating ourselves because when we do that we are not just desecrating ourselves we are literally desecrating you we are violating your holiness we are violating your name and so you take that very seriously so i pray oh lord that you would help us to recognize that you have set us free from those things we are no longer that old helpless person that person was killed by you now we are a brand new creation with the full freedom and authority to offer our bodies for righteous things so help us to live in that way oh lord recognizing this truth which you have done for us i pray that you would guide each of us oh lord uh, um, into greater holiness on a daily basis show us how to do it oh lord be very clear to us oh lord in your guidance help us to hear from you oh lord and i pray that by the end of this course we really would have changed into greater holiness baby we will be more pleasing in your eyes you make that happen for us because it's only going to happen by your strength and power and you promise that you are the makkadesh you will make us holy you will kadosh us thank you for that promise lord in jesus name amen thank you so much for holding on to the end uh, yes so we'll meet again next uh, week thank you